Hello everybody and welcome to Comic Time. I am Rainbow Red Panda and this is Norton and we have lots of things. <laughs> um, that's all I can even really use to describe all of the stuff that I got at my shop this week. Um, it's a lot of comics and a very important trade that I'm probably not going to talk too much about because I want to make my own video about it because it totally deserves its own like time. So here's all the books. There are 36 of them because I counted. Um, the only old one that I have is Dexter's Laboratory um, number one and I totally am so excited to read this. I love reading the Powerpuff Girls one because I read it like in the voices of all the characters and I know I'm gonna do the same thing with Dexter's Laboratory. It's my like one of my favorite cartoons growing up so I'm super excited about it. I didn't get it the week that it re launched but I have it now so better late than never. Um, new stuff we have Adventure Time the flip side number five we have, speaking of Powerpuff Girls, we have Powerpuff Girls number 9. And number 8 was an amazingly awesome issue for me. I thought it was like the best Powerpuff Girls issue ever. And yeah, it was awesome. So I'm really excited to read number 9 and see if they sort of continue with that. We have the second arc of Rat Queens starting. We have Rat Queens number 6, which I'm really excited about this. I really like, I really like Rat Queens. And... I'm excited for this new arc to see what they're going to get themselves into this time. We have the ending of Apocalypse Al, the four-part series is over, but it'll it'll still be good. I'm still excited for it, so maybe, maybe it'll end up coming back. I don't know. Until I read it, I don't know. We have this one I've started reading, and I'm not done with it yet, but WWE Superstars. It is ending as well. And you have this on the front, and then on the back have a tribute to the Ultimate Warrior, who, I don't know, I think I talked about it in one of my other videos, who he passed away recently after being inducted into the Hall of Fame and all that stuff, so I thought that was fitting and I was really excited that they did that, so yeah. We have Jonathan Hickman's God is Dead, number 12, still always going to call it that, um, and I'm excited for that one, I really like that series. Suicide Risk, number 13. Totally excited for that too, and I've gotten this since the beginning, like since it launched, I've had this book, and like the old lady at my comic book store was like, I felt like this was your book, but I didn't know, and so I just put it in your pile, and I was like, 12 issues worth I've gotten this book, and you didn't know that it was mine, that's, that's interesting. Um, we have this one, it's number one, I'm super excited about it, Nailbiter, number one, it is out, I love the cover. I'm excited to see what it's about and how awesome it's going to be because I know it's going to be awesome. I'm excited to read it and that's just all I can even say. I've been looking forward to this book for a long time. We have Loki, Agent of Asgard, number four. We also have Moon Knight, number three, which I think of all three covers now, this one is my favorite cover. I like the green and the skeleton and I like it. We have Batman Eternal number five, which I am behind on Batman Eternal. A lot of people that I know really, really like it though, and I'm really, I'm excited to get caught up on it and see if I like it as much as everybody else. But I still don't like that it's weekly. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it makes the story easier, but buying the same comic every week, like, I'd rather not. <laughs> We have Future's End number one. I actually almost didn't get this one just because I'm like, I'm trying not to just buy everything. Like, I know that sounds weird because I still do, but like, I at least had a little bit of an internal struggle. Um, I ended up getting it because I just, I just couldn't leave it. It just, I don't know, it looked at me and it was all sad and I was like, I will take you home and love you. So, yeah, I'll hopefully I don't regret that decision. We yeah, have The Punisher, number five, which I'm really liking this title. Um, my favorite is The Wolf, his like wolf pet, and yeah. Um, we have Iron Fist, number two, so I'm excited for that one. One of the ones, Cullen Bunn's Magneto, number three. I'm loving everything about this Magneto. I love Cullen Bunn. It's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good series. I'm glad that he has like an ongoing series from Marvel right now, since all of the other like Marvel stuff that he does is mainly mini series. So I'm excited for it. We have She-Hulk number four, which I'm excited for this one as well. I like, I like some She-Hulk. 
And we have Black Widow number six. Nathan Edmondson, he writes both The Punisher and The Black Widow. So that's that's cool that, you know, you have you have two books coming out on the same day. Like, that has to be an awesome feeling. We have Justice League 3000 number six, which I really, really love this title for sure. A lot of people don't, but I do. So deal with it. We have The Crow Pestilence number three. Which, ironically enough, first of all, this cover kind of reminds me of Clockwork Orange because of the whole eye thing going on, which is awesome. But the second one, issue number two, takes place um, primarily through Illinois, and that's where I live. And the second um, town that they mention specifically is called Effingham, and it is like a half hour away from me. I, I basically like grew up there, and it was really cool to like see it be mentioned in a comic book. The scenery that they gave it, nothing like it. Like Illinois does not have like forests and mountains like it looks like in that thing, at least not this part. And so that was interesting. I don't know if they just like threw a dartboard at a map and said, okay, we're using Effingham. No one researched what it looks like. We're just gonna draw it with trees and, and mountains, but. Yeah, I was really excited to see it in there. It is not mentioned in this one, though, at least in the parts that I've looked at so far. But I was excited that it at least made it into number two. We have Cyclops number one. I'm excited to read this one for sure. I like Cyclops, so yeah. We have Phantom Stranger number 19, which this is an awesome cover. It's a little bit different, in my opinion, from all the other Phantom Stranger covers. But I'm excited for it, and I'm I'm liking it. Um, you know, Forever Evil's kind of over, so it's, it's nice to get all these titles sort of back to where they began. We have Savage Wolverine number 18, which I like Savage Wolverine. I feel like the last arc um, ended, so I don't know where this one's going to go. He's he's done so many things in this series. He started off in like a jungle, and then he was like saving, saving elephants in Africa, <laughs> and then he was like back in the 30s, and I don't know where he's going now, but I'm excited to read it. We have The Amazing Spider-Man Learning to Crawl, number 1.1. I'm excited to read that, too. Original Sin, number 1. I just got the variant cover. I don't know. I didn't... I could have gotten both, but I just decided to just get this one. So we'll see if I end up going back for the other one. But my shop had, like, a huge stack of both, so I just, I just got that one. We have All a New X Factor, number 7. Which I really like that title too. New Warriors number four. <laughs> the Movement number 12. This one is ending and I'm kind of like, I liked it, but I'm kind of like just ready for it to be over. Um, it's, I don't know, that's sort of one of the things that I run into. Once I find out a series is ending, I'm sort of just like, okay, you can just end then. Like, it's hard to read something when you know it's going to end, so. Sooner or late, than later, I guess. Um, Hinterkind. It's the new storyline, apparently. Uh, this is number seven. But I, I really liked Hinterkind, too, so it'll be interesting what this new storyline is and how it fits into everything. We have Sinister Dexter, number six, which this is one of my favorite titles also, for sure. It looks a little... I'm excited for it. Both Sinister and Dexter, they, they work really well together, and I like reading all of the like shenanigan things that they get into. We have The Wake, which I really thought this was going to be ending too soon, but I, I feel like we should be on number like 12 of 10, because I, I just feel like it's gone on forever, but this is only number 8. Um, it seems like it's been along for a lot longer than 8 issues, but it has only been 8, so all that. We have... Satellite Sam number eight, which this issue gave my my copy, my comic book store lady like could not find the price on this. So she's like looking all over it. She's like some eighty year old lady like examining it, and I'm just like, don't judge me for my comic reading tastes. Like <laughs> it's all good. And then my top three, um, top three comics. My top book of this week. The thing that I was looking most forward to is not even a comic but it didn't make the top three because it's not a comic. We have the Deadpool vs. Carnage, number three. Super excited for it. Colin Bunn doing it. Um, I love everything about this title. I wish that it was just an ongoing series and not just a like a mini-series. 
We have Revelations number five by Paul Jenkins, which I did the interview with Paul Jenkins and it was awesome. And he has told me that I'm not going to see the ending of this coming. Um, I still haven't looked it up on the internet because I can. Um, I don't want to know. I just want to be uh, surprised and see if I can predict it. So I'm excited to read this and see what Charlie Northern is getting himself into now. Um, but I'm just always keep remembering like apparently I'm not gonna know, so we're gonna we're gonna test it. Maybe I'll do like a video the night before the last issue comes out or something and say what my predictions are and see if I'm right. But we'll see. And then my number one book. It is my favorite cover of the week, and it's always in my top three every time it comes out. Um, Revival number twenty. I love this cover. I remember when Mike Norton when it came out. Um, they released what the cover is going to look like. Mike Norton was like, totally Tim Seeley, do not blame me for any of this, like, his idea. And it is a pretty awesome cover, I gotta say. Um, I'm really excited to read it and see how it goes. And I don't know if it says on here and here. No, it doesn't. Um, but the next issue, I believe, after this is the Chew Revival, like, crossover. So I'm excited. I'm excited for this revival. Revival is always one of my favorite comics, and it's an awesome cover, and I'm really excited to read it. So, those are the comics that I got. Um, cupcakes this week are amazing. I've actually eaten one already. Usually I haven't, and I eat one afterwards, but I totally ate one already, and it was messy, and it was awesome, but they're peanut butter and chocolate, and it's oh, so good. Um, I get too excited about food. We have the littlest one this week, and it is going to go to Nail Biters because I'm super excited to read it. It was one that I was really, really looking forward to, and I'm hoping that Joshua Williamson does just as good with it as he does with Ghosted because he writes Ghosted as well. And the first arc of Ghosted was amazing, and I really liked the second one too. Um, I wasn't sure where it was going, but I like it. The second one is going to go to Revival and the awesome like Jesus M cover that we have going on here because it's epic and it's awesome and I'm so excited to read the series. <laughs> I'm so excited to read that issue. Like, I just want to like read it. And the biggest one is going, I have to make sure that my hands are clean because if I'm going to touch this thing like being really weird about it. I almost didn't want to open it. Like I didn't want to open it and then I did. But this is the thing that I was most looking forward to at the comic book store this week. It is it is this. It is the special deluxe edition of the True Life of the Fabulous Killjoys comic. Um, it's in this awesome cover. Here's what the comic looks like. Um, I'm going to be doing another video fully going over everything that's in here because there's a lot of stuff in here. I love this book so much. Um, I can't even, like, there are, like, no words to describe, like, my feelings that I actually got it and that, all of that. So, super excited. I just want to, like, do this for the whole rest of the video. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to be doing a whole video just on this book. Um, so, if you liked the True Life of the Fabulous Kill, Ch True Life of the Fabulous Killjoys comic or the album or any of that, um, stay tuned because it's going to come out. And it's going to be awesome. So yeah, this is the book. The regular trade also came out today if you just want the regular six issue issue trade. So yeah, this is the book. And it gets the biggest cupcake because it's my favorite. And that's all I have for you guys this week. So I'll see you guys next week. And hopefully you got all of your comic books and that you are not as behind on reading as I am so that you can enjoy them now. Because I am behind and so I can't enjoy all of these right now. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.